Hey everyone, leakers have already released chapter 246 of Jujutsu Kaisen, so let's talk about it. The chapter right where we left off with Kusakabe blocking the slashes from Sug, but we learned a little bit more information about these same slashing attacks, these dismantles, and these were not the same ones that defeated Gojo. Not only do we learn that it wasn't dismantle, but it's actually cleave, which to me makes more sense. It's the one that can be adjusted to one-shot anybody. But we also learned that it either requires a binding vow or a chant of some sort. Not only that, but Kusuk Kebi says that if he were to actually use this world-splitting attack on any of them, regardless if they had domain amplification, simple domain, or just curse energy reinforcement, they would not survive this attack. It would absolutely on-shot them, so they have to hope that he won't do it, or they can't pull it off while they're jumping him. And then if you're a Choso fan, this is where things get ugly. Choso uses piercing blood, and Sua very easily dodges it. Not only that, but he literally speed blitzes Choso and impales him with both of his hands. He then tosses Choso off to the side, and then when we see Eno coming down with Nanami's old blade, whenever he attacks, we see the critical hit effect even Swan acknowledging as well. It turns out they've imbued Nanami's old curse technique of 73 into the blade as well, so it's like he's hitting like Nanami would. But Sua is still too powerful, and even with a critical hit, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't even sever his arm. And then we just see a lot of battling and a lot of missed attacks. Sua throws a couple dismantles that are again blocked by Higuma or I'm sorry by Kusakabe and Yuji. Not only that, but Higuma goes in with the executioner's sword he misses, and then Sukuna kinda pieces him up and throws him off to the side. Yuji says that he can't leave them alone, but Suguna says, let's race, and actually completely outspeeds Yuji. Yeah, Yuji the same one who's got the physical prowess can't keep up with Sua. He's then thrown through a building and Higuma stands up. Then we get into a flashback. In that flashback, we learned that Higaruma's executioner sword would be a key into saving Megami. The reason is whoever the verdict is about is who the executioner sword will kill. So in other words, if he were to use the executioner sword on Sukuna, Sukuna would absolutely perish. But Megami would be just fine because Megami was not the one who received the judgment as Sua shows up right in front of Puma. We learned that Higuma actually blocked his ability with domain amplification and the narrator says that despite the fact it's been two months, Higuma has learned so much, including things like domain application, which is better than simple domain, showing that he has a ton of potential. And even Sua recognized this as well after a little bit more. Talking, Higuma expands his executioner sword. Not only that, but as he welds up his cursed energy, the narrator says that he has potential to match Gojo, or that he could actually match Gojo very soon. The translation a little bit iffy on that one. Once the official translations come out, I'll let you guys know the chapter was absolutely amazing honestly. The only thing I didn't like was the very ending. Not because I don't mind people surpassing Gojo. I think it's weird that someone who's only been a sorcerer for two months has the potential to surpass Gojo. To me that part's a little bit weird, but hey, we'll have to see if he cooks or not. Regardless, this was still a very enjoyable chapter. What do you guys think?